Hello everybody. Uh, today we're working on this iMac logic board part number 820-2641. Yeah, it's covered here under this sticker. And um, basically when we got the computer, there's no power. Um, we tried power supplies. We tried reconnecting or disconnecting all the stuff off of it. Uh, making sure there's no peripheral um, device that kind of uh, shorts it and stops it from powering on like a camera maybe or a Wi-Fi card so everything was disconnected except for the power supply um, power button and like a couple of fans so and there was still nothing only one light um, would turn on the one LED, testing LED light would turn on and nothing else so we decided to um, do some in-depth diagnostics and we pulled up the schematics for it and um, I'm not gonna show this in this video this one is only for um, a very specific process that we do here a lot and that's um, detecting the short on any uh, Apple motherboard uh, using the magic FLIR tool um, it's a thermal um, imager or thermal camera that basically sees the hot and cold areas of pretty much anything and so what we've discovered here is um, the 5 volt line was short to the ground so we found a spot where to actually connect to it um, and I, I soldered a little wire um, because we are going to be feeding current into that line in order to warm up the shorted component so that we can see it with the camera and hopefully remove it or replace it with the, uh, a different one and have a you know a successful repair so so let's see um, okay so um, I have my power supply uh, I'll show it later uh, it's just a very standard power supply where you can only adjust like current and voltage uh, pretty inexpensive one you can pick one from eBay for like 50 70 bucks so and we put the black uh, probe or negative to the ground anywhere on the motherboard so I'll, I'll just pick this area um, not this one just have a solid connection and then the positive will will connect to the actual um, um, power line that's shorted or the bus whatever you call it and now the power supply is off um, so let's yeah let's put the, let me see if I can route the cables a little bit away like that actually you know what I'll put this somewhere yeah over here so that it doesn't obstruct anything so, uh, my battery is about to die, so let's try and do it quickly. Okay, so I powered on the power supply, and I see that it's drawing over over 2 amps of current, uh, which is, you know, pretty high. So that's, that's a pretty dead short somewhere on that 5-volt line. Okay. So there we go. This is the thermal image of the board. And obviously the hotter areas are yellower and the cooler are like colder, bluish. So I am just hovering above the board and I'm looking for like distinct hot areas. But I don't see anything like very Sometimes it will be like showing some yellow, but it's when you get closer, it can be like some kind of a reflection from a, a metal part or something. And you see, it definitely reads that you know, my body temperature is much higher than the logic board. So I'm carefully going around the board slowly in one, you know, one side first, looking for anything that um, and sometimes you you get these like areas that are somewhat 
confusing, but that's only like uh, some kind of reflection. So. So it's it's kind of like warm somewhere around here. But it's only whatever 10 Celsius, it's very low. So let's f I couldn't see any distinct stuff up uh, on this side. So let me flip it on the other side carefully because you have those wires running, right? Uh actually let me put it on another ground somewhere okay so we're on this side now I'm going around it's it feels like there's something on here let me grab a, a plastic tool so it feels like maybe something on on this area right here right is a bit warmer so let's get closer and see if we can we've got 10 celsius here which is kind of cold i think that it's not calibrated correctly and when we get to this area, it's like five, almost 10 degrees higher than the rest of the board. So another test I'm doing is I would just shut off while I'm while I'm watching it. I'll just shut off my power supply and watch it oh, cool off. So now I'm powering it on again and it glows. Okay, so let me pinpoint because that's a pretty densely populated area. Let me just put a a tool right where I feel would be the center of the heat and I, s I see a capacitor let me zoom in so it's right here that's where I get the hot area so we can um, now just measure the resistance across both of these capacitors and see what we have. So I'm shutting off the power supply and um, because I couldn't really see anything else that um, is getting hot. So let's zoom back out. I memorized the area. It's right uh, here, these two caps. Okay. So here's my voltmeter um, we go into resistance mode or ohm meter and let's measure across these two caps so one point oh six second one point oh six so they must be I don't you see I don't even need schematics at this point as long as I figured, okay, well, this power lay rail um, is short. After that, you know, I'm just plugging this thing in, feed current, you know, have a thermal image of the area, and then, like, uh, in, in in some er in some instances, I would have like just one component, and there's nothing around it, so that would be a definite answer. In this area, uh, it can be one of the two. I doubt it would be both. Uh, it, it can be only part of the problem. You know, sometimes uh, you remove this and the short becomes, uh, it's basically improved, but it's not completely gone. So then you have to feed um, current into the board again to find where else you have, a, you know, kind of the remainder of the short. So, uh, but let's uh, remove these two uh, guys and... Uh, see what we read as far as the resistance on that line after that okay okay so uh since i'm trying to make a video short i'm not doing the actual 
component removal on the on the camera but I haven't measured anything I removed both of the caps and uh, let me just measure it right here on the camera and see if we got any improvement so basically I can either measure it across uh, the ground and my uh, cable that I uh, connected to the 5 volt rail it's actually PP5 VSO so that's the SO state 5 volt um, so oh, where's that okay so let's just put our black probe on the ground and it's in the resistance mode um, and we just uh, plug in I mean connect the probe to the okay and I think we have some improvement definitely it's almost one kilo ohm. Um, and just to be again just because I'm curious I also kept the two caps in the same order like this is the left that was kind of on the left and this is the right that was on the right so just wanted to measure that um, those um, as well just to see if it's both or one so measuring the left one and it's not looking good yeah it's kind of in there right so that's no good let's see the other one and the other one is perfect the resistance is pretty high it's not short so technically we can put that one back on the board and find the replacement for the other one so let me um, yeah I'm gonna find a donor uh, board we probably have a board like that somewhere in the shop um, I'll just switch both of them just to be sure uh, and then we'll throw it into the computer and um, see what we get all right okay so we have um, replaced the two caps uh, we found a similar board um, and let's just uh, measure the resistance on that across those caps just to make sure it's still warm um, yes oh sorry <laughs> okay so yeah the resistance across that um, yeah it's basically still about one kilo uh, one kilo ohm so that's that's not short for sure uh, still we don't know if that fixed the problem or not the only way to do it uh, is to just uh, assemble it a little bit uh, put all the major uh, like important stuff only the processor some heat sinks and uh, give it a quick uh, power on test and see what's happening all right so let's do just that all right guys now the moment of truth we are gonna be powering this computer up right now so that's the board those are the caps we replaced um, I didn't put any screws just connected everything um, so the fans are in there that the, you see even the DVD drive is not here and I'm not putting the screen yet I just want to see if I get any action on the fans first so let's plug it in um, I also installed a couple of sticks of RAM just to make sure we're not getting um, no beeps and uh, strangely enough it turned on without me pressing the power button and chimed uh, that's a little strange let's shut it down okay um, and let's unplug it one more time and see if it uh, powers on automatically this time okay one more time so powers up unplug it plug it back in and we have one light here let me get it closer you see one LEDs on I didn't even clean the flux from the repair so one LEDs on and now I'm pressing the power button one two three and power fan spin oh all, uh, we have uh, three LEDs but that's normal because the LCD is not connected so 
and I hear the hard drive activity so that's good um, I guess I would call it a successful repair now the only thing left is to just plug in the screen make sure we get visual and just put it back together yeah that's speeding up because a few sensors and I think the optical disk drive sensor is not connected yet so basically finish it up test it properly and call the customer make them happy all right so that's how you find a short using a FLIR 1 thermal imager okay give this video a thumbs up subscribe to our channel and um, spread the word thank you bye okay so the final step we're you know the screen is back on the computer let's power it on just to confirm we got a successful repair and as you see gray screen and uh, an apple all right so that's how we do it thank you bye